How's it going, Super Friends? Thanks for joining me today as we have a look together at the brand new Mezco 112th Collective Aquaman action figure. Falling in line with most of the rest of Mezco 112th Collective's DC offerings, you've got a very simple packaging motif with a solid color and a logo for the character, in this case Aquaman. 112th Collective down the bottom left, DC on the bottom right, and Aquaman in the top. Here's the top, here's the bottom, here are the sides, Mezco 112th Collective on the top, Mezco toys down the bottom, and the Aquaman symbol smack dab in the middle. For the back of the box, we can see all the stuff that we're going to get on the inside, the figure and all the accessories, along with some artwork, four squares along the bottom as usual, and here's the barcode, just in case you were wondering. When we slide off the protective sleeve, on the inside, we find the window box where you can see all the stuff you're going to get on the inside, at least the stuff that's in the top layer bubble, clearly displayed. Along with another Mezco 112th Collective logo, and another one that's upside down. I kid, I kid. I just got to turn it around. And on the back, we can see that image of Gomez. And then popping the top and pulling the figure out, here's what we get. It looks like the 112th Collective sheet is in jail. Let me out, let me out. Fine, you can come out too. Here's that sheet that it comes with, and you can pause it to read it if you want to, although I bet you didn't pause it. And here is the first bubble with everything you get. We're just gonna pop that open and take everything out. Don't worry, both of these extra heads are wrapped in plastic, so nothing got damaged. And opening up the second layer, you find, oh, well, it's just the bag and the stand arm. That, that's it. Usually there's more. And now that it's all out, let's get a better look at the two extra heads, the crown, the shoulder-mounted thingamabobby, the trident of Neptune, the stand, the bag, and the extra hands, not to mention the figure. What was that actually called again? Crossbody strap with shoulder pad. That's it. Now doing things a little bit backwards in comparison to what I usually would do, let's look at the figure first because I really like the complementary greens they've chose to go with the gold and the orange, and I really like what they've done with his tunic and with his pants to give them that classic Mezco flair, but also try to reproduce somewhat the texture of what Aquaman would be wearing under the sea in his royal armor. For example, Aquaman's belt does have a resemblance to how it would look in the comic books, but it's certainly a whole lot more detailed and made to look definitely Definitely a whole lot more like what you would think Mezco would interpret Aquaman's royal armor to look like. Same thing with the boots, they're just chocked full of detail, and honestly, if we're gonna go with a Mezco style slash comic accurate version of a figure, I think that Mezco quite often does a good job on adding their own flair to things because they've kept the basic details. You've got the fins on the back of the boot there. You've got the boots in general. You've got the green trunks. That's how we know it's the classic Aquaman. And you've got the fins on the back of his gloves there, but you've also got that extra added detail that appears absolutely nowhere in the comics. And of course we have the neckline of his suit, which is really ornate. I like what they've done with it as well, and it matches the rest of the figure, so no complaints with the actual design of this guy whatsoever. I really like him. As for Aquaman's initial head sculpt, they've gone with that stern, straight-faced, no-nonsense, a little bit ticked looked, and I think that it works out well for him. I like the fact that his hair looks like it's just recently been kind of wet and it's all blown back from him getting out of the water. And then looking at that secondary head sculpt, it's the slightly more ticked off head sculpt. These head sculpts, you'll notice, go on a progression of more and more pissed off looking. I like this one because it looks like he's underwater, so if you're into the action figure photography side of things and you want to do those underwater shots, this is going to be really, really good for that because it looks like his hair's floating. And here is the somebody just pissed at my cornflakes head sculpt. It's the head sculpt that clearly you're going to want to put on his shoulders when he's right in the thick of battle. Maybe he's going face to face with Black Manta or the Ocean Master. He's just right riled up and ticked. As for Aquaman's kingly battle crown, you can see here what it looks like up close. Not too shabby, turn it around, you can see that there's this little magnet in the back. What's it there for, you ask? Well, that's because he's got a plate in his head that he fell off his bike in 1987, and he dented his skull, and they had to put a plate in his head, so now, when he wears his crown, he doesn't have to have the straps, he can just have it stick right to the metal plate in his head via a magnet on the inside of his crown. Let's do the shake test. <laughs> That's, yeah, that's pretty good. But remember, he also comes with this really fancy dancy shoulder, wait a minute, what's it called again? Oh right, a crossbody strap with shoulder pad. There is a nice little spot to clip the trident of Neptune onto his back. Let's actually put it on him. To do that, you're gonna have to take off his head. Oh wait, nope. It actually comes apart. I'm a dummy, hang on. That means I can put his head back on, along with his golden crowny do, and it just fits 
right around his body like that, and it just buttons back into place. His crown looks like it's a bit high. There, that's better. <laughs> I don't know why I had it so high up on his head. <laughs> that just looks silly. And yeah, the trident just goes boop right there in his back like that, and now he's good to go. He can walk around and go get his groceries and stuff like that and still have both hands free and not have to carry around that pesky trident of Neptune. However, if you do want him to carry the Trident of Neptune, then you can take off his hands and replace them with the grabby hands. Pop it off, pop it on, pop it in. And here he is, Undersea King Arthur, ready for battle. And just to sum it up, here's a nice little group shot of all the accessories that Aquaman comes with. The trident, the wearables, the fists, and the heads. Oh yeah, and there's the action figure stand with the base, and then you pop out the thingy do in the middle, and then you stick the arm in, and poof, you've got an action figure stand with a flight arm. As for comparisons, first off, here he is in between two of my favorites, a DC Universe classic scale, and also the brightest day Aquaman from DC Direct. A DC Collectibles New 52 Aquaman, a DC Multiverse Aquaman, and a DC Collectibles Greg Capullo, and a DC Collectibles DC Essentials Aquaman. And finally, just for funsies, here he is next to my old school DC Direct classic Silver Age Aquaman. So now let us go into articulation, of which this figure actually has quite a lot, although it's not without its limitations, like all the rest of the Mezco 112th Collective Action figures. So as we all know, the head's on a ball peg, we can see it right there, and exactly how much articulation it gets is, you know, it's typical of Mezco. I mean, they have lots of articulation points, but they're not always the most usable, but you have the neck down here and the head up here, both with a little bit of movement, and you've got the torso, which is on a ball joint, which is typical of all Mezco figures. The waist does have some movement. They all, there is an articulation point under this belt, but sometimes it's just not very useful. I'm assuming he's got a butterfly hinge, like all the rest of the Mezco 112th Collective, there's also a hinge up in his armpit here. There's a bicep swivel. The elbows here go about like that. Remember, these fabric suits, though very cool looking, do get in the way of the articulation, if that's something that would be a problem for you. Aquaman's wrists are on ball hinges, as you can see here, and they can go up and down pretty well. There's a reasonable amount of articulation with him in the hand department. He's also got a ball joint groin, and, you know, we know exactly what that can do. It gives a pretty good rounded range of motion there. He's got some articulation up in the top of the leg right where it connects to the ball joint. He's got the double jointed knees as you can see here and again beware the fabric and also this time around the fins on the back of his boots they are going to get in the way of exactly how much he can crunch up. There's no articulation at all whatsoever at the top of the boot because the boots have been firmly attached to Aquaman's legs. However the ankles are on ball joints and they do have a pretty good range of motion round and round and up and down back and forth. Some people do prefer a little bit more articulation in the downward motion to Department, but all in all, I think that they're pretty good. And that's what he's got for articulation. All right, and final thoughts. What do I think about this guy? Do I think he was a worthwhile purchase as an Aquaman fan, as a DC fan, as somebody who collects DC action figures in general? Is this a worthwhile purchase? Is it worth you trying to track this down at your specialty shops or find someone online that's not just trying to scalp it? I think absolutely, definitely worth it. This Aquaman figure is a very, very welcome addition to my DC Comics Mezco 112 collective action figure line. I find myself very impressed with the suit and the face sculpt and the color choices that they've chosen here. As usual, Mezco gave it their added Mezco 112th Collective flair, and I think in the case of Aquaman, it works very, very well, because Aquaman is, after all, an undersea king, and why wouldn't things like his boots and gloves and belt and neckline look a little bit more extravagant than they tend to look in the comic books? Anyway, super friends, that indeed is my story, and I'm sticking to it as usual, so hopefully you enjoyed this video, found it a useful waste of time in some way, shape, or form, and if you did, then hey, leave me a thumbs up, because that's gonna let me know that I did something right today. Any comments you have, you can pop them down in the comment section below, and if this is your first time here, well, welcome, thanks for getting to the end of the video, that means a whole lot to me, and if you wanna see more of my hands and some of my face pop up in your news feed, then I invite you today, on behalf of the rest of the super friends, to join the DC Squad Simple by hitting the red button. You all knew that was coming, right? <laughs> that guy, that's at the end of like every YouTuber's video. <laughs> and I will see you next time with the next one. Have a DC day, everybody, and take care.